smells lemon balm. How Ruby smells lemon balm. <sighs> Hiya guys, just a little update from the seedlings. We've got all sorts going on. Spring onions, I'm doing them in clusters. Um, I forget where I originally saw this idea from. Normally I'd plant them out in lines, but clusters. I think it might have been Charles Dowding. I've gone for roughly five seeds per pot, and these are these cardboard pots, which um, I can plant them straight out into the ground. I don't need to fiddle around taking it out of the pot. So at some point they'll be getting planted out. Not sure if they'll be at the allotment or in the backyard. Food forest, don't know yet, but either way they'll be getting planted out somewhere. We've also got a little plastic tub of just a load. How I'm going to separate them, I've no idea. I got seed fever. I went all seed happy and just threw a load in, so... Don't know what I'm going to do with those, I'll sort them out though. Here is a pelagonium from the one on the windowsill that I I trimmed back um, start of spring a few weeks ago. <clears throat> but when I trimmed it, I took a lot of cuttings material. So in there, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven cuttings. And they're growing, and when you gently tug, there's resistance, which says to me they've got roots. Now, I say gently tug. Those roots are very young and fragile. If you pull it too hard, you'll just snap them off. So, at some point, I will be potting those on. And I'll probably just tip the whole pot out and gently tease each plant out separately to pot those on. Um, it's got a lovely lemony smell to the leaves. I wish you could smell this. It's really nice. So we've got, um, in various stages of growth, purple sprouting broccoli, some cosmos, Florence fennels, lupins, um, no sign of a globe artichokes, some basil. Probably with the basil, I will intersperse that in the greenhouse at the allotment, in and amongst the chilli and sweet pepper plants that we're going to be putting in, in the growing greenhouse this year. So we've also got calendulas, nigellas, uh, some more white chard. Yeah, quite a lot going on. Now, over on the windowsill, squashes were planted and courgettes, um, 19th of April. There's not an awful lot of sign of action yet. We've got one green bush courgette up and one Turk's turban that's come up. And then over here, I've got things that are pretty much ready for planting out. So there's some flat leaf parsley. I think, I'm, yeah, and one curly parsley. Um, that's the curly parsley. The other parsley is a, a flat leaf. So they'll be probably the flat leaves I want to put into the food forest. So at the back of the food forest, right next to where we keep the chickens, is this Stanley plum tree. And the blossom's been and gone. There are quite a few tiny, tiny little plums formed where the blossom was. And one thing I've noticed is, can you see the, the graft join there? You'll you, be... You, easier to spot it if you see that the colour of the, the trunk is different to the colour there. So that's that's where the graft join was. Well, coming out from just at the base of the rootstock is what we call a water shoot. Now these are quite vigorously um, growing. And what will happen is, is, well, basically this is the wild form of whatever the, the rootstock is. This, this is coming from the rootstock. So, like I said, it's a wild form. Most of the time, most of the time. And what that means is it will fruit, um, but a lot of the fruit will be right up at the very top. As this continues to grow, um, it'll, it'll be hard to reach. It'll get really, really tall, because like I said, they're very vigorously growing. And we don't really want fruit on this. We want fruit on the rest of the tree, which is a manageable size. So that we can pick it. So what I'm going to do 
is take off this water chute and I'm going to make a nice clean cut as close to the trunk as possible and just get rid of it so that the energy that's going into growing it um, which is getting wasted at the moment because we're not going to want it is the energy will go into the plant proper the rest of the tree where we do want the fruits there we are so I've cut that off hopefully that won't come back is that one around the back as well let's have it yep there's another little baby one there so we'll get rid of that oh and that's a weed All right. so I'll run them through the shredder in a bit and we can compost them no more is there? no good right next to that plum tree is the tree fern and it's had its winter coat removed I made a video um, in the autumn about how we protect it over winter and I use chicken wire and straw I'll put the link on screen now you should see it in the card above oh can you see the frond lots of lovely new growth on this there's another frond there oh very nice so all I'm going to do now is just trim away any dead branches just to smarten it up I'm not, not decided yet if I'll compost these dead branches or if I'll just lay them on the floor of the food forest. It's all mulch, isn't it? So I've got a few. Is there any more? Oh, yeah, here's one. Looking good, looking really good, what a gorgeous plant. And this gorgeous fern tucked right in the corner, so to, to give you an idea where it is, this is the frame Olivia and I, my eldest daughter, built. Which when these transplanted raspberries get bigger, it will support them. Um, there's the tree fern, there's the plum tree, so it's right in the corner next to the bay, the bay laurel. Um, this has come through winter absolutely untouched, so it's either incredibly hardy or it's loving the sheltered little corner that being tucked in here gives it. And it's a polystichum polyblepharum. And that's about all I know about it, really, just the name. But how nice is that? It's like a really glossy, shiny, deep green colour. Really nice. Have we got any fronds on there? Let's have a, Let's try and move some out of the way. Let's have a little look. Or is this it? Is it already opened and I've, I've missed it? I can't see any little uh, baby fronds. Yet to unfurl. Lovely. Very nice. The mock orange Philadelphus uh, Bell Etoile. It's been in that pot for years. I do give it a good few inches of top dressing compost a um, couple of times a year. But it, to be honest, it could probably do with getting planted out. But I don't really want to put too many ornamentals into the food forest. I mean, I've already got quite a few and I don't want to overindulge. I mean, it's not really a food forest, is it? It's just more like some nice shrubs with the odd herb dotted around it. So I'm not going to be planting it out anytime soon. If I ever come across a bigger pot, there's no reason why I won't put it in a bigger pot because I want it to do well. Um, but I've just noticed, where have they gone? Ah, here we are. Right. There's black fly, which are currently being eaten by some ants. So we're witnessing 
nature here. As it say, red in tooth and claw or something. So there's, there's actually a war going on right there. Them ants are, are battering them black fly. Um, I'll keep my eye on the rest of the plant. That's the only cluster of black fly I've noticed really, to be honest. I've had, I've had a good look around over the new tips. But what I'll do as well is if it gets out of hand with those little insects, I can, I'll just give it a spray in a spray bottle with some soapy water, a little bit of washing up liquid. Uh, I have explained this in another video, but I'll explain it again because I'm, I'm aware you, you might not have watched it. <laughs> it was a few years ago now. So insects breathe through holes on the body called spiracles. And all that washing up liquid in the water does is it just sort of like gives a greasy film which covers those holes so it's going to suffocate them. Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. For now, I'll let those ants try and wipe a few out and we'll see how it goes. Little baby pair, hopefully one of many. Wallflowers are really growing on strongly now. A lot of little baby weeds in this pot. See, that's the problem. Sometimes we find when, when we use our own compost, um, if we've not been quite strict about what we put, or more importantly, what we don't put in the compost, i.e. weed plants with flowering heads on them, which can go to seed, and the seeds are in your compost then, this is what can happen. So... There's two people's books here you can take a leaf out of and learn from. You can learn from my mistake and my uh, laissez-faire attitude to water compost. And you can also learn from people like Terry King, who is absolutely on the nail when it comes to composting. Um, I bet he doesn't have this problem. So when these wallflowers flower I expect to see lots of pictures on my Instagram account I think I've done a meaning of plants video about wallflowers so I won't be able to do that but while we're on the subject of Instagram guys if there's any um, garden related Instagram accounts that you enjoy following just name drop them in a comment underneath and then both me and other people can go and check them out because I I'm, I quite like my Instagram and I'm always looking for decent accounts to follow. Claire got all of these four tall, I don't know what they were. They're like little bins perhaps, I don't know. But uh, we've put spuds in them. So we've already got a few sprouted. That one there is doing all right. I've no idea what the variety were. They were shop-bought potatoes that we were going to eat and they'd got loads of um, chits on them. So we just popped, the, popped them in some compost. That one there is coming up. Any side of that one? No, not yet. So out of the four, we've got three that are showing already. Like I say, don't know what the variety is. Doesn't really matter. They'll, they'll all get eaten. You'll have seen from my allotment update videos, I've got plenty of spuds planted out at the allotment. Um, are you guys growing spuds this year? And if so, what are you growing them in? Are you growing them in the ground? Are you growing them in buckets, pots? Are you doing the um, turned inside out compost bag trick? Where you have the black plastic on the outside, um, which keeps it warm and everything. And then... As the, the plants grow, you top it up and you just unroll the bag. How are you growing potatoes this year, guys? Leave a comment, let me know. got one of these delivered recently off the internet 
and <laughs> you know what it is i know what it is i said to olivia and ruby what do you think it is girls one of the answers i got was um do you use it to cut grass so i thought it was a, a good idea but then knowing that they're quite soft plastic i don't know if that would work so and the other idea that i got from uh, one of my daughters was i can't remember who said what but the other one was do you use it to groom dogs with <laughs> which i suppose actually is is again not a bad idea really because you collect all the fur which of course you're going to compost aren't you when once you've collected the fur but no this berry picker um I got it in the hope that it would save a load of time with the two black currant plants that we have at the allotment. Um, it will, and it won't. We'll, we'll see how it goes about the time because uh, people have looked into this. So people like Hugh, Hugh Richards, is it the? Yeah, he he. A couple of years ago, he's he's done a video where he did an experiment and he timed how long it took him to pick. Um, to fill a plastic jug by hand compared to using one of these now this was obviously a lot quicker to pick but because you get all the leaves and stalks and stuff going into it you've then got to spend time fishing those out so uh, it worked out I think by hand was ever so slightly quicker per the same amount of berries so but the picking it's certainly going to speed up the picking process because um, I do find it really boring just sitting next to one of the black currant bushes and just it seems to take hours and hours picking them off by hand so we'll, we'll see how this goes a dog groomer honestly <laughs> actually there's probably a good idea there for a, some kind of dog groomer yeah Let's talk about the comfy patch I have in the food forest garden. So the main reason I grow comfy is to use as a feed for my compost. There's a few different ways you can use it as a feed. You can add it to your compost like I do. You can cut off leaves and put them directly on the ground around certain plants. For example in greenhouse growing tomato plants absolutely love what comfrey gives to the soil around the tomato plants another thing that some people use them for is they will soak them in a hessian sack in a bucket of water and it makes a really powerful liquid feed word of caution with this it stinks now I'm leaving quite a few of the flower bearing stalks on the comfy because I want those flowers to be there for the bees and also let's be honest about this I need the material for a meaning of plants video today I've chosen just to add the stalks and leaves of comfy that I've just picked to my compost the eagle-eyed amongst you might be able to spot the dead tree fern leaves in there so you know what I decided to do with the bits of tree fern that I cut off as well I added them to my compost heap not only is comfrey jam packed full of the essential plant growing nutrients like phosphorus, potash, nitrogen it's also um, a really good kind of activator because I think it's because it's got such a high nitrogen content if you've got a lot of brown woody material in your compost heap that's high in carbon, the comfrey really speeds up that breaking down process. While we're on the subject of using plants as compost, fertilizers, feeds, here I am at the allotment just putting some nettles into a, a water butt where they'll rot down and they'll, they'll add their nutrients to the water. Another material from most people's gardens that can be reused is dried grass cuttings. Here I am using them as a mulch around some newly planted strawberries. This particular little area in my food forest I'm really happy with. You can see how the, the plants are starting to fill out and it's like it's, it's carpeting if you will. 
the that that just that one corner it's, it's my bestest bit out of the whole food forest i think so i'm cutting some herbs here the one um at the bottom of the screen is winter savory quite a, a versatile herb you can use it in all kinds of things and then the yellow colored herb above it is a golden marjoram um, we love preserving our herbs by doing nothing other than tying them in a bunch with some string and just hanging them up in the kitchen where they dry wonderfully well and then when they dry we can transfer them into jars with a little silica sachet in there that's how i do it and then they'll, they'll last for ages still holding on to the flavor staying with the subject of herbs I'm now going to plant out some of the flat leaf parsley that you saw me talking about at the start of the video which I've grown from seed this year I'd love to share with you a bit of a recipe an Italian recipe that uses flat leaf parsley like a lot of good Italian food it's very simple and it's kept down to a minimum of fuss in terms of the amount of ingredients that you need so that the ingredients that are in it of which flat leaf parsley is one just knock you away so you get some olive oil eat it in a pan into that you're going to add some finely sliced garlic you don't want this on a ferocious heat because your garlic will burn and it tastes disgusting the next thing you add in with the garlic is a chopped chili and you let them cook when they start to sizzle keep your eye on that garlic remember you don't want the garlic to burn when they start to sizzle you add your chopped flat leaf parsley and you cook it for about a further minute you don't want to overcook the parsley because it wilts into nothing so that will take about 10 minutes now go back to the start when you're getting your pan with olive oil on you also want to be getting a pan of boiling water to add your pasta you can use whatever you want uh, penne spaghetti uh, rigatoni um, come on i can't think of any more there's loads of types of pasta use whatever pasta you want it will take roughly the same amount of time to cook as your garlic chili and flat leaf parsley will take to cook in the olive oil pan when when all that's ready you add the pasta into the pan with the garlic chili and flat leaf parsley mix it through and serve how easy is that and it is it is so simple it's just delicious as well it's fast becoming a family favorite in our house all right so using a very small amount of space on our really crowded kitchen table at the moment because of the lockdown it has turned into um, a multi-use environment as this kitchen table it's got all the seedlings on it. It's got Ruby's Arts and Crafts station and it's also getting used to do schoolwork on. So I've got about <laughs> eight by eight inch square of space left to work on. I'm going to repot a few of these pelargonium cuttings, which I took on the 22nd of March. So I mentioned them earlier. Let's let's pop one on. Let's see if we can get one of these out without destroying the roots. Um, now I was going to do them all at the same time, and then I can just literally tip this out and then gently separate them. But because I'm going to do it piecemeal, let's see if we can. So I'm squeezing the pot as it loosens it. Is there any any roots on that bad boy? Tiny one. Can you see? I don't know if that's worth, well, I've, I've took it out now. I might as well pot it up, haven't I? So let's, what can I use as a dibber? Ah, I know. Don't tell Ruby, I've got one of her paintbrushes. See, it make a little hole. Right. I've got to be really protective of that root, so I'll get that into the hole. Just pop it in, firm it, right, that needs a label. I mean, although it only had the one little bit of root on, it's doing all right. There's definitely new growth. 
definitely yeah so do you know what i might do another i'll just get another pot of compost filled up so although we do have tiny little like whitish flowers on and um, we don't really grow these for their flowers it's mainly just for the scent so in terms of out you come in terms of where we're going to put this it's it'll be somewhere where we get to enjoy the smell and uh, we, we've had a few in the greenhouse up at the allotment in the past we have some in the kitchen windowsill the uh, the porch entry at the front door of the house that's a nice place to put them. Now that's got a lot more roots on it. That's pretty decent. So I don't know if I can get away with using the paintbrush twice. So this time I'll just make a hole with my finger. Get it wide enough to sit those roots in. Okay. I'm going to plant it to the same depth. Now you can see where the soil's marked up to on the plant. So that, that's a good little guide. And just get that firmed in. And these two will, will get a little drink. And hopefully we'll get some decent plants out of these. Pop the label back on the cuttings. Brilliant. Pelagoniums for free. Love it. Free plants. Now, Ruby's got herself a little paddling pool. We used to have a huge one, but since I turned that into a food forest, there's no space for the big one anymore. So she's got this small one. Right, and she keeps saying to me, Dad, <laughs> the water goes down overnight. Somebody must be drinking it. Oh, it's got a leak. But I don't think it's got a leak because the floor's not wet. What I haven't told her is I've been using this to fill up the watering cans. So, Ruby, when you watch this, you will be paid off for watching to the end because uh, you'll see that it's me using it to fill the watering cans up. 